Let's see the conquerors from different lands, that is rulers from the different different countries. So the last Mauryan ruler, the Indian ruler, he was overthrown by the Pushyamitra Sunga in the 185 BC and then he, he dominated the Mauryan ruler and he occupied the empire of this Mauryan ruler. And then he established a dynasty called Sunga dynasty in the east. So later in the Deccan region, the Kanvas people established their authority and in the central India, the Satvanas people established their authority. And then the northern western India, this was conquered by a number of dynasties from the central part of the Asia. So people from other countries came to India and started ruling over the Indian places. So he, this was the statue of Pushyamitra Sangha and this was the Satvahana Empire in the central India. Now let's see about some Bactrian groups. The Indo-Greeks or the Bactrian Greeks. See Bactria was, Bactrian was a language which is now extinct. This was spoken in the early ages in the northern part of the Afghanistan. So Bactrian people were earlier living in the northern part of the Afghanistan. They used to speak a language called Bactrian which is now extinct. So now let's learn about the Indo-Greeks or the Bactrian Greeks. Bactrian Greeks. So Parthia, this was a region between Khorasan and the adjoining region to the southeast of Caspian Sea and a Bactrian place. This was around bulk of northern Afghanistan. So Bactrian was a place in northern Afghanistan and Parthia was a place in the Capsian Sea region. So these were two districts of the Iran which were ruled by the Greeks. This Bactrian Greeks, they used the weakness of the collapsing Mauryan Empire. Mauryan Empire collapsed, right? And then these Bactrian Greeks used this advantage and then they moved into the India. They were migrants from the northern part of the Afghanistan. So after the Mauryan Empire collapsed, there was a ruler called Manendar. He conquered the territories of India up to Patliputra region. And then he was influenced by the teaching of Buddha. After the collapse of Mauryan Empire, there was an Indo-Greek ruler Manendar who came here and occupied the places of India up to Patliputra. And a Buddhist, he used to follow the teachings of Buddha and become a big patron of the Buddhism. And this Manendar also introduced the gold coins in India. And then all the rulers which came from the foreign lands in India, they all started a common custom of issuing gold coins. The Greek ruler who came to rule India, Manendar, he introduced a school of art in the northern western part of the India. So that was a very big contribution of the Greek ruler. And then the Indian style of art and the Greek style of art were mixed up. And then came a new style of art known as Gandhara art. So this is image of the Gandhara art students. And this is a silver coin of the Manendar's ruling aid period. So they introduced gold coins as well as the silver coins. And this is the silver coin of Manendar's ruling period. Next let's see about the Sakas. These Sakas established their rule over the different parts of the India. And these Sakas had five branches of which the branch that consolidated power and ruled over a large territory was the one which ruled over the western part of the India. So there were five branches of these Sakas which were ruling the different parts of the India. But one branch which was ruling over the western India was very ruling over a large part of the country. They introduced a new form of the government known as Satrap system of the government. So the total empire was divided into small small provinces also known as Satrapis. So each province was known as a Satrap. And the name of the famous Saka king is Rudra Daman. He was a great patron of the Sanskrit language. So there are a many Sanskrit works belonging to this period. A famous book was Buddha Charita. This was written by Aswagosa. So in this image we see the Saka ruler that is Rudra Daman. This is the image of Rudra Daman. And this is a book called Buddha Charita which was written by Aswagosa. Now let's talk about the Parthians. So in the 1st century AD, the Parthians moved to India and occupied the northern western part of India. So northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent occupied by Parthians in the 1st century AD. Gondophernes 
was a renowned king who was ruling in that period so in his ruling period there was a saint thomas the apostle who had come to india to spread the teachings of jesus christ so gondophernus the ruler at that time so at that time there was a saint called saint apostle who came to india to spread the teachings of the jesus christ so this is the image of saint apostle and this is the parthians army next moving on to the kushanas kushanas were tribal people they came from the central asia actually these kushanas were nomadic tribes but later they migrated to india and also parts of iran afghanistan and northwestern india so this power of kushanas reached its zenith under kanishka in the ad 120 to 144 and this kanishka's empire it touched the borders of all the great civilizations of that time so kanishka was a great empire so these kushanas they exchanged their embassies with chinese as well as the roman people and what was the capital of the kanishka empire purushapura was the capital of the kanishka's empire so during the period of kushanas a lot of gold coins were issued which are now found in as far places such as mathura and banaras and these kushanas created a new calendar which was known as the sakas calendar So these sakas ka start counting from the year AD 78 and this is one saka calendar which is officially followed by the Indian government today so the general calendar which follow which we follow in our day to day life was created by the saka was created by the kushanas known as the sakas calendar so kanishka was also known for patronage he extended to the mahayana buddhism So he has ruled for over 200 years from the middle of the 1st century AD till the 3rd century AD the Kushana empire collapsed Now let's study the impact of the rule of the Sakas and the Kushanas So because there was lot of trade contact between Central Asia and India this only led to the coming of Sakas and the Kushanas into the Indian subcontinent and these Sakas and Kushanas these people introduced a new style of dressing and what was this style of dressing this was turbans tunics trousers and heavy long coats spread of buddhism to central asia so buddhism not only spread to the central asia but also southeast asia as well as the east asia so how did this buddhism actually spread so there was silk route right and the silk route had northern route and the southern route so indian travelers indian traders who were traveling along this silk route they also are responsible for spread of the buddhism in the 1st century ad he was also exposed to the teachings of buddhism and then the kanishka ruler became a staunch follower of the buddhism and this kanishka ruler he used to he- conduct to buddhist council meetings and the last meeting was conducted at kundalavana in kashmir state and the capitals of buddhist empire that is kapisa and peshawar these were a big centers of buddhist learning like they had big universities who used to teach this buddhism so by the end of the 1st century ad and the traders who were traveling along this silk route they spread the buddhism to china also so now in china the major religion practiced is buddhism so there was an emperor named ming in the ad 58 to 75 he was the ruler of the han dynasty and he was the first chinese emperor to be interested in the buddhism religion and then between the ad 399 and 412 the chinese buddhist traveler named fa hin visited india and he came in search of the complete buddhist scripture that buddhist scripture is known as vinaya pitika so fa hin visited india in search of the buddhist scripture named vinaya pitika and then after returning to china he spent all his life in translating those scriptures into the mandarin language and then later in china buddhism became the main religion to be practiced in the 7th and 8th centuries ad so in this image students you see the peshawar city which is the capital which was the capital of the kanishka empire and this was the buddhist scripture which was later translated into the local mandarin language and this is the image of the fahin traveler who traveled to india